Morning. Art Hostage here and we're going to do another episode. Well, a couple of interesting developments. First of all, okay, we've got, um, we got Cecil, uh, Landman who is, well, let me just call up his details, right? Cecil Landman is a journalist in Italy and the ne Netherlands, resistance against organised crime. Okay. Now, an article was dropped, which I'm going to read to you, right, by Jan. Um, where is he? Right, by Jan Mius, M-E-E-U-S, in the Netherlands, about Riddle and Target. Incredible article. Okay, and he, uh, and I think he may be a future guest for um, Nicola Talent on her podcast. Okay, and and also I would recommend that Nicola Talent gets on Cecil Landman, right? Because what he said, okay, you'll be interested here on Twitter. He's just said this: enough material, thick files about Raphael Imperiali in my possession for six months, directly from Naples, where I was told by the chief prosecutor that there was a super cartel together with Irishman Daniel Kinahan. No newspaper, no magazine, no editors showing interest. Crazy, huh? Yeah, it is crazy. So we've now got a journalist here who's got thick files about Raphael Imperiali, okay, the Camorra boss that was extradited from Dubai a couple of months ago as part of the drug super cartel, the Kinahan drug super cartel. You got Riddle and Targi on trial in the Netherlands. You got Raphael Imperiali serving his jail sentence in Italy, Camorra boss. Riddle and Targi is the um, Mocro Mafia boss. Okay, you've got El Rico, the Chilean, he's in custody. Okay, you've got Daniel Kenahan still free until this week, allegedly. That's what the information's come through. That the request from Sean Murphy, the charge aid affair in the United Arab Emirates, has made the official request for the extradition of Daniel Kinahan, Christy Kinahan Sr. and Christopher Kinahan Jr. And the UAE has said, we'll meet you halfway, we'll arrest them and take them into custody and the extradition proceedings can then start. And uh, Sean Murphy, the charge aid affair for um, the United Arab Emirates based in Abu Dhabi, is going to accompany Joe Biden on Friday and Saturday to Saudi Arabia. Okay, and then, then they're going to meet, obviously, with the uh, UAE president or the person in charge of the UAE, the royal family. And the subject of Daniel Kinahan may come up. And as I said before, you know, it, it, they're, they'll be arrested either before Friday, during Friday, Saturday, or shortly thereafter. You know the way the wheels turn slowly. Okay. So there's direct links here, right? And then you've got a journalist here has got thick files about Raphael Imperiali and no doubt about Riddle and Targi and Daniel Kinahan. Right, let me just read what he said again. Thick files about Raphael Imperiali in my possession for six months directly from Naples, where I was told by the chief prosecutor that there was a super cartel, together with the Irishman Daniel Kinahan. No newspaper, no magazine, no editors showing interest. Crazy, huh? So it would be easy just to say that the media are asleep at the wheel. Well, they're not all asleep at the wheel. I mean, Nicola Tallant's trying to do stuff, Stephen Breen. Okay, but there's, yes, they have been told. There's a script that they can write about and there's stuff that they can't write about. And yes, there's censorship going on. Right, and maybe in the fullness of time it will come out and it will be admitted. Why? 
But anyway, I think this Cecil Landman might be another good guess for um, Nicola Tallon after she has Yan on. Yan Mias, right? Now, let me go to his article because this one, right, blew me out the water when I, um, oh, God, I don't want to make them kind of metaphors. Right, this is, this is unbelievable. Communicating with the outside world from a heavily guarded cell, Targi succeeded. Organised crime. Even before Ridwan Targi got his cousin Youssef to visit the extra-secure institution as a lawyer, he communicated with the outside world. Justice knew that, thanks in part to a tip-off from the FBI. On Monday, the court will reopen the murder investigation into Peter R. De Viris. The American FBI warned the Dutch authorities in December 2020 that Riddle and Targi could communicate unseen with the outside world. At that time, Targi was already in the extra secure institution in vault. According to the FBI, Targi are regularly made available for unsupervised physical and or electric electronic communications with third parties. That was possible thanks to one or more compromised prison guards, according to the FBI. Based on messages sent with crypto telephones from the Canadian company Sky ECC, the FBI has determined that Riddle and Targi actually communicated with an important accomplice. In November 2020, he forwarded a message to Italian Mafia boss, Raphael Imperiali. Within the thick walls of the extra-secure institution in Vault, commotion arises on Tuesday, December 1st, 2020, when a new lawyer called in early in the afternoon for an appointment with Riddle and Targi. It's his cousin, Yusuf. A family member as a lawyer could thwart everything the EBI board does to isolate Targi. The contact between a lawyer and his client is confidential and should not be overheard. What to do if they can't refuse Yusuf? What no one knows yet is that Targi managed to make contact with one of his most important accomplices in Dubai in the autumn of 2020. It is the Italian Raphael Imperiali, a prominent member of the Neapolitan Mafia branch Camorra, and, according to the judiciary, has been an important business partner of Targi in international drug smuggling for many years. Imperiali receives a message on his phone on November the 18th, 2020, from Sky ECC, a crypto communications provider. Hi, sir, reads the beginning of the message, written in English and translated by the police. How are you and your family? After that, according to the police, it immediately turns to drug-related matters. I don't understand your Panama account records. I've asked you to prepare an account statement with my son, sir. It was eight months ago and you didn't do it. When the Dutch police see this message a month later, the family relationship cited here, my son, is the indication that this text was written by Ridwan Targi. The man with whom Imperiali has contact is the son of Ridwan Targi, the police conclude. Targi was therefore able to send information from the extra secure facility during his detention, despite all of the restrictions. How did that go? And why is Cousin Yusuf seen as the contact person between Targi and the outside world in the ongoing criminal case against him? After all, Targi's message to Imperiali shows that he already had contact with the outside world before Yusuf reported by telephone to the EBI in December 2020. And what are the consequences for this complex issue of the new statements that have come to light in the murder case 
of crime journalist Peter R. D. Verres and will be discussed during the reopening of this criminal case on Monday. Well, that was this is yesterday this article came out, so it's today. Red Hot This Is, a reconstruction based on conversations with insiders, file documents and email traffic. Ridwan Targi shares a cell block in the country's best security prison with Mohammed B, convicted of the murder of Theo Van Gogh, the politician or, or whoever he was. The three other cells in the block are empty. Mohammed often cooks for Ridwan, who suffered serious physical complaints from a violent interrogation in Dubai before being put on a plane to the Netherlands in December 2019. Oh dear! So Ridwan Targi, right, was had violently interrogated in Dubai. Oh my God, what they got planned for the Kinahans then? Gordon Bennett. See, they don't mess around. And if it's up to the presidential level, honestly, waterboarding, well, that'd be like a walk in the park. Good grief. I just want to read that again to you, right? Honestly, here, Ridwan, who suffered serious physical complaints from a violent interrogation in Dubai before being put on a plane to the Netherlands in December 2019. The two are not allowed to eat together to ensure Targi's isolation. The EBI has also withheld mail and denied an uncle and an ex-brother-in-law access to Ridwan Targi, who has detention number 1473552. A request to participate in activities with fellow detainees was also rejected in the summer of 2020. These measure, measures are driving Targi into a frenzy, according to Incident reports prepared by the EBI custodians. The head of department has no balls and does not dare to make decisions. As soon as the going gets tough, he starts to shiver and hide behind the people from above, Targi told a guard. The only contact Targi is allowed to have with the outside world is with a number of close relatives. They are allowed to call and visit if they pass the screening. Strict requirements apply to such contacts. The physical conversations take place behind glass and are monitored, recorded and translated if necessary. Targi only has unmonitored contact with members of his team of lawyers, which is led by Inez Weski. On Tuesday, December the 1st, 2020, Youssef will receive his first phone call to inquire about his request. He is not known as Targi's lawyer and is not on the visitors list. Almost immediately afterwards, it is now 1.30pm, the relevant EBI employee sends a message to the Judicial Institution Service, which is responsible for the Dutch prison system. That message is followed by a phone call to an employee of the Amsterdam Department of the National Prosecutor's Office of the Public Prosecution Service. I have just been called by an employee of the EBI that Yusuf Targi has presented himself as a lawyer for Ridderman Targi and wants to visit him. The email that this Public Prosecution Service employee sends at, th at 13.53 to about 20 colleagues at the Police and Public Prosecution Service. So we are going to think about how we are going to object to the EBI regarding this visit. It reads at the end of the message. Documents released after a WOB request from the AD earlier this year show that in the hours and days that follows, a considerable amount of email traffic starts between employees of the EBI, the police, the public prosecution service and the DGI. What to do with Yusuf's request? The conclusion of the deliberation is that Yusuf is not allowed to visit his cousin Ridwan. The argument is that the Dean of the Bar Association is currently investigation, the mis investigating the misuse of 
Yusuf's lawyer's telephone, which should not be tapped. Yusuf would have let another cousin use that phone. Interesting detail, this cousin is currently being held on suspicion of involvement in the murder of lawyer Dirk Wearsome. A week after Yusuf was denied access to the EBI, the Dutch police received high-profile information from the FBI. It can be deduced from, inf from information that the detainee, Ridwan Targi, regularly receives means to communicate unseen physically or electronically with his son and others through one or more bribed prison guards. The Americans reported to the Dutch police on December 15, 2020. A month earlier, the FBI had already reported uh, that Imperiali and the Sons of Targi are preparing an attack with explosives on the EBI in vault or other government facilities. On the basis of these two messages, a police team of the National Unit led by National Public Prosecutor's Office of the Public Prosecution Service will start an investigation in February 2021 into a criminal organisation of which Riddle and Targi, some of his relatives and Raphael Imperiali are members. Codename 26 Mandel. That file shows how the Americans obtained their information when they shared it with the Netherlands. It has to do with the hack of crypto messaging service Sky ECC, which the police have been working on since 2019. The file documents show the Dutch police will be given permission on the 15th of December 2020 to investigate already decrypted messages in the Sky database. And from February 2021, the Dutch will be able to read live messages via Sky. That's Andy Craig and his team. Until March the 9th, 2021, the day Sky will be taken off the air. Sky ECC's customers do not use their own name, but are hidden behind a nickname and a special PIN code. This information is therefore in, important in order to know who sends which messages to whom. At the beginning of March 2021, Europol will send crucial information about this to the Netherlands in a so-called intelligence package. It contains the PIN codes of the Sky telephones of Raphael Imperiali and the son of Ridwan Targi, who regularly communicate with each other. A week later, on March the 17th, 2021, a final leg hurdle to the investigation is cleared when an investigating judge grants oral permission to use the Sky data for the investigation 26 Mandel. This means that the police can check all contacts of Raphael Imperiali and Targi's son and, and thus map the network of these men. Who do they all communicate with? In that jumble of information emerges a special message. Hermando, I asked a relative who is a lawyer, that message was, I asked a relative who is a lawyer. That message was sent on March the 8th, 2021 by Jayud F, the eldest son of a sister of Targi. When he sends this message, Jayud F, has also been in the picture of the police for some time in relation to previous attempts to let his uncle, Targi, communicate with the outside world. If all this takes place in March, lawyer Yusuf will be told by his supervisory dean that the investigation into the alleged abuse of his lawyer's telephone has revealed nothing. The EBI then decides on March the 11th, 2021, that Yusuf can visit his cousin, Ridwan Targi. A day later, he parks his grey Volkswagen Golf for the first time at the prison complex in Vault. It is the first of a long series of visits to his cousin, Ridwan, with whom he has been in contact by telephone almost every day from then on. According to a Public Prosecution Service spokesman, there were indications that Targi could communicate with the outside world. 
This has been investigated, but no hard evidence has been produced as to whether and how this could have happened. Therefore, in March 2021, there was insufficient legal ground to refuse his new lawyer. Well, that was what they, they released to the public. And that's what they said to him, because they were listening anyway. You see how they tell lies. I mean, you know, they do lie, but it's part of the investigation. On Monday morning, March the 22nd, 2021, a helicopter will hover directly above the extra secure court in Amsterdam, Osdorp. A little further on, two drones are buzzing. Road traffic is being diverted. Ten days after Yusuf's first appearance in the EBI, Riddle and Targi will make his first public peer appearance at the start of the Marengo trial. The Marengo case against the main suspect, Riddle and Targi, and 16 accomplices revolves around six liquidations and nine attempts to do so or the preparation thereof. You know, six murders and nine attempted murders. Targi manifests itself Targi manifests itself emphatically in the first days and weeks of the trial, especially during the interrogations of Nabil B, the key witness in the criminal case. I respond to him, Targi says when he addresses the judge about hand gestures he makes to the key witness. It's, uh, it's action reaction. One of the people who keeps a close eye on all of this is Peter R. De Viris. The crime reporter is Nabil B's confidant and works closely with Nabil's lawyers, Ono De Jong and Peter Shooton. The trio is on a death list, but unlike De Jong and Shooton, Peter R. D. Verres has no personal security. When the criminal case has been going on a month or so, Peter R. D. Verres is regularly followed by an unknown Polish man without knowing it. It is, it, it is the result of the order to kill the crime reporter, which was given to 27-year-old Pole Christian M. At least that's what a new witness dubbed Eddie told the police. As the Marengo case dwindles to an end in November 2021, Eddie, also a Pole, secretly makes a series of detailed statements about his friend Christian M., and the two suspects in the murder of De Viris, Camille E. and Del Delano G. They were arrested on Tuesday evening, July the 6th, 2021, at 8.15pm on the A4 highway towards The Hague in a stolen Renault um, Kadjar. Camille E. is behind the wheel. Next to him, Delano G., Less than an hour ago, he shot Peter R. De Viris several times in the head from close range. More than a week later, on the 15th of July, De Viris died of his injuries. The Public Prosecution Service recently demanded life sentences against Delano G. and Camille E. But because of Eddie's new statements, the court will reopen the case on Monday, today. It is not entirely clear why his statements have only now been added to the file. Presumably, it has to do with the protective measures that have been taken for witness Eddie. It is uncertain whether the court will rule as previously scheduled next Thursday. The days after the death of Peter R. de Viris, many Dutch people show their grief over the loss of the crime reporter. Then come the questions. How can a man who was known to be on a death list be murdered in the centre of Amsterdam? That question becomes more pressing when NRC, together with the German weekly Der Spiegel, reveals in August 2021 that Peter R. de Viris and the police were warned a week before the fatal shooting. An employee of the parking garage where de Viris always parked his car when he performed RTL Boulevard said that a man followed him as he walked from the studio of RTL Boulevard to his car. Nothing happens with the tip. Afterwards, the public prosecution states that they this must have been Camille E. Months before that, the family of star witness Nabil B had already sounded the alarm, especially about Yusuf's frequent visits to Riddle and Targi in the EBI. 
They don't trust that, but get little response. After the murder of De Viris, all eyes turned to Yusuf. On the 23rd of July, 26 Mandel was identified as a suspect in the investigation. The Public Prosecution Service suspects that he maintains contact with the outside world for his cousin, Ridwan Targi. A very exceptional request is then submitted to the investigating judge. The judiciary wants to listen in on the confidential communications between Riddle and Targi and his lawyer Yusuf in the EBI. The judge agrees. From the end of August, meetings are overheard and later also recorded with cameras. This material eventually leads to the arrest of Yusuf on Friday morning, October the 8th, 2021, in front of his cousin Ridwan in the EBI. He is seen as a member of Targi's criminal organisation that has been preparing an outbreak attempt. It echoes the warning that the FBI issued to the Dutch authorities almost a year earlier. Yusuf admits almost immediately after his arrest that he smuggled information in and out of the EBI. I have done something wrong and I am deeply ashamed, Yusuf told the judge, but he strongly denies that he endangered people involved or act actually wanted to cooperate in the escape of Riddle and Targi. That Friday afternoon, then Minister Sander Decker sent a letter to the House of Representatives about the arrest of Yusuf earlier that day. At that time, Decker is responsible for the Custodian Institution Service, which includes the EBI. I realise that many will be surprised that a family member of a detainee who has been placed in the strictest detention regime we know in the Netherlands has more or less undisturbed access to a detainee, Decker said in a letter, but the judiciary cannot refuse a lawyer on grounds of family ties. What the letter does not mention is that at the moment that Yusuf gains access to the EBI, concrete signals are known to the police and the judiciary from which it can be deduced that Targi is continuing his criminal activities in the EBI and that a new lawyer may play a role. The EBI has great discretionary powers to monitor security within the institution as court cases often prove to the frustration of judges who cannot force the EBI to do anything. The director of the EBI is, is about or, the, the director of the EBI is about order in vault and no one else. Concrete indications for continued criminal activity are a special reason for refusing requests, according to court decisions about targets detention in the EBI from 2021. Only the Public Prosecution Service and the Dutch state have chosen not to disclose findings from the spring of 2021, and Minister Decker does not do so in his letter to the House of Representatives. In fact, in an interview with the AD, Decker states that there were no concrete indica indications to deny use of access to the EBI. On Tuesday, October the 19th, 2021, 11 days after Yusuf's arrest, the detectives raided a house in the Hague near the Zweda Park. According to a tip from the criminal environment, a number of Poles who are active in the drug trade live, here, live there. No one is surprised, although the action is certainly not a routine job due to possible possession of weapons. In the house, the police do indeed find a weapon with ammunition and a taser. They presumably belong to Christian M, who is being arrested. According to the police, he is the man who directed the two executors of the murder of Peter R. de Viris. More interesting than the weapons, it turns out later, is a phone found with 27-year-old Pole. In it, the police find a series of messages between this Christian and a man hidden behind the nickname War Mode Equal Back. The man behind this nickname is Jarrod F., the nephew of Riddle and Targi, 
who has been identified poli by police as a key member of the group of men around Targi since 2015. With those messages, the police have therefore found a link between the group around Targi and the perpetrators of the murder of De Viris. And that's not all. A few weeks after the raid in The Hague, another po poll reports to the police, whom they give the nickname Eddie. This poll knows Christian M. very well and says that he has been involved in bad things. In June 2021, during a car ride, Christian told Eddie that Camille was hunting that journalist, whom he meant Peter D. R. D. Verres. He had to die because he worked for the key witness. Eddie says that Camille E. is Christian's accomplice. According to Eddie, Camille worked for Christian, who gets his assignments through the mail from a man called Uncle. Or Eddie knows already knows who that uncle is. That's the boss of the Mocro Mafia, Eddie told the police. He killed the brother of the key witness. Christian never mentioned the uncle's name to Eddie, but Eddie says, according to him, his name is Raswantagi or something. Together, they would receive €150,000 for the murder of the journalist. Yusuf's name does not appear in the series of statements that have been added to the file against the two executors of the murder of De Viris. Not yet. It is not known exactly how many statements Eddie made. Sources with knowledge of Eddie's statements and the investigation that is now being done saying that this concerns, among other things, the question of whether, and if so how, Riddle and Targi ordered the murder of Peter R. De Viris from the EBI, and whether lawyer Yusuf played a role in this. Yusuf denies uh, that to this. Sorry, Yusuf denies that to this day, as does his cousin, as does his cousin Riddle and Targi. I mean, this is unbelievable stuff. So that's why. In the Netherlands, right, there's a black, you know, they're keeping it quiet. And that's, um, Marmite, yeah, Andy Craig, the ex-special services, right, tough as steel. Right, done two tours of Iraq and Afghanistan with the Dutch special forces. He's the director of intelligence. And now the FBI, I mean, you see, this is a big one, isn't it, eh? The top, right, and now it's being connected. Right, you've got Riddle and Targi, Raphael Imperiali, Daniel Kennan, these are the kind of people. And you now have got um, a crime journalist, Cecil Landman, has got thick files about Raphael Imperiali in his possession for six months, directly from Naples, where he was told that there was a super cartel together with the Irishman Daniel Kennan. No newspaper, no magazine, no editors are showing interest. Crazy, isn't it, eh? It is crazy. It's a huge story. And then we're going to start moving over into boxing when Daniel Kenahan's arrested. And all the dreams are going to be shattered of, of millions of boxing fans because we're now going to see the corruption in boxing and how deep it goes. So anyway, right, this is not a bad one, right? This is a 33-minute one, okay? I just thought the article is very, very important. And it's helping put all the uh, pieces together of the jigsaw. So this is going to be, right, Art Hostage, episode 225. Ridoan Targi trial. The behind-the-scenes stuff with the FBI, Raphael Imperiali. Okay. Murders of journalists. Okay. And Daniel Kinahan's next this week. According to the latest intelligence, our hostage signing off.